It's all about humanity. Hello, model citizens. Welcome to Humanity Junction. Tonight, we're going to do my favorite thing, which is wiring. Um, not so much electronics. We're just going to start running some of the base wiring for my Z scale, just so that I can move on with other things and work out that order of operations. I do have a poll going on tonight to see what people uh, find the most interesting thing of model railroading. We've got wire and electronic structure and scenery track work or rolling stock. Uh, structure and scenery is winning big time right now at 57%, but we do have 14% saying wiring, which is, uh, which is actually higher, higher than I, uh, than I expected. But uh, yeah, it's good to see. Uh, John says, I didn't put locomotives on my list. Rolling, all right, so here's another question. Does rolling stock include locomotives or not? Because I think rolling stock could be all rolling stock, or is rolling stock just everything that's non-powered? I guess I don't know the definition. So while people are answering that question, Dennis says no. I think he's saying no to me that rolling stock does not include locomotives, I guess is what he's... Uh, what he's saying. Tim says it can. Steven said both are the same. Um, Ron from New Haven says rolling stock is non-powered in my opinion. Uh, Dennis says yes, non-powered is my thought. So I, I guess there is some, uh, uh, some debate to be had. Maybe locomotives are not rolling stock. Locomotives are motive power. Uh, Steven says rolling stock includes locomotives. So I'll let you guys fight it out in the chat for a little bit while you guys are doing that. Let's say hello to Andy Estep, Barry Olson, Cameron from Caboose 21, uh, Tim from CP368 Productions, Dave from DES Media Productions, Don Heads in the House, James from Dundas, Junction Model Railroad, Eddie Papert's here, Frank Naher, 
Anthony from Georgia at Sunbelt. John Benicki is here. John Train BFGR. Lauren Horowitz. James from Mr. Jimbo Trains. We got Ron from New Haven Rails. Dennis from Otter Creek and Rio Grande. Art from PDRR Engineer. We got Mike the Rail Artist. Roger Coleman. Ron Moen. Roy Eltham. Steve 87 PSAP. And Steven Wigwag Workshop. Thank you for everyone that's come over here and is not watching uh, Atherin or if you are watching Atherin and you're watching me at the same time. Um, yeah. Uh, so my dad is saying Heath probably doesn't remember, but when he was two or three years old, he sat on my lap and pulled wires through two by fours as I wired our basement, setting up a room for our future train layouts. Of course, his became better than mine. Well, um, oh, here we go. People are saying, what about a dummy locomotive as far as rolling sacks? So locos are under the heading of motive power. So Let's change the poll a little bit. If you already voted, I'm sorry, but we'll say rolling stock and motive power. Does that does that sort of satisfy? Uh, does that satisfy at all? So let's talk about what's happening uh, back here. Let's get a little wider so we can see things. So what I am going to do tonight is just add some uh, feeder wires and some sensor wires. What I need to do is I'm going to get some track power wires about in this location here. The, let's see if this has it. Nope. Nope, that one doesn't have it either. Well, I don't have a shot of it, but right here, right there is the, uh, the transformer for all the Z-scale stuff. So I want to get a another line run to here. So I'll have one line on the one side and one line over here. And then the other thing I want to do is get a line run for the sensor that's going to be on the end. And the reason I'm running those lines first is because I'm going to run those lines. Then we're going to put up some cloud backdrop stuff. Uh, but I want to get the lines in first so that the clouds are on top of the wires, not below the wires, if that makes sense. James from Dundas Junction Model Railroad says, rail transport industry states both powered and unpowered equipment. I'm assuming he's saying, our, so rolling stock is both powered and unpowered. Uh, Steve 87 says, okay definition, any vehicular, ve vehicular used on the railroad. So, Thomas bought some lights from Iron Planet Hobbies. Thank you for using one of our sponsors. Ask a real railroad employee. I don't, I don't see our real railroad employee in here yet, but uh, maybe if he shows up, we'll, we'll bring up the question again. So, so yeah, so I'm just gonna get that wiring in. It's a pretty simple job, I guess, but I got a couple colors of wires. The hardest part's gonna be deciding what colors to use for uh, the various things. I got some Spray 77. This is what I was originally thinking I was gonna use to put the, uh, the paper up to help keep it like up there. And then as I was thinking about it more and more, I really didn't wanna spray Spray 77 in this room. And just like a stroke of genius, um, I realized, why don't I use glue sticks? I mean, glue sticks are like the Spray 77 of five-year-olds, and I need a five-year-old solution. So I am going to uh, not use the Spray 77. I'm gonna wait for my glue sticks to arrive, and I am going to basically start by glue sticking a piece to the columns and then I've got some foam core and I'm gonna use that to span uh, in the center. So it's got, uh, so the center's removable. Basically I'll, I'll wrap the columns and glue that on and then I'll glue paper to foam core and then the foam core will just sort of stick in between. So if I do need to pull it out, I can uh, pull it out. So funny, the federal government extends it to all vehicles as anything used for support services, including ferry boats, trucks, buses, transient, etc. So rolling stock they consider to be ferry boats, but ferry boats don't have uh, 
wheels. Yeah, Andy, I, you know, I was thinking, oh, I could like go out to the park and do Spray 77 in the park, but or Super 7, whatever it's called. But, you know, I just, I don't know. Apparently, Martin uses Super 77 to kill flies, so he may have it all over his walls. Yeah, so I've been using red and black for my uh, my DC power. Uh, for whatever reason, T-Track uses blue and white. I generally got the green wire for my frogs, you know, because green frogs, whatever. Um, so I am also thinking, uh, I'm thinking white and yellow, maybe. Although maybe I could use green, I don't know. That's going to be a hard decision, I think, figuring out what color to use. Uh, Double-sided tape, yes, is an option. Uh, the, the reason I don't want to use double-sided tape is just that I tend to have a hard time getting the double-sided tape, like, off. The, like, I just make a mess. Um, I just make a mess with double-sided tape. Yeah, and, you know, I, I do know that gluing things to the wall, I'm going to make a mess. But glue sticks are essentially PVA glue, so I'm not too worried about that. And then everything else, like the big, you know, these big large areas are going to be on a piece of foam core. So they're, they're going to be minimal, minimal stuff uh, stuck to the wall, but I think... I, I got another two years on the lease, so I think I'm I think I'm gonna be okay. Gugon takes off double sided tape. Yeah, Gugon takes off almost everything. Uh, so Ron New Haven Rails has just asked my close friends, who's a railroad employee for over 44 years. Rolling stock is freight and passenger equipment. Uh, motive power is normally in its own category: steam, diesel, or electric. So there you have it. <laughs> Andy said, uh, history research is my favorite part. That's a good one. And I saw uh, Joey from Late Night says, I don't have bench work. Part of the thing with polls on YouTube is they only allow you four options. So I, I could only do, uh, I can only give you uh, four options. <laughs> so Dennis, of course, agreeing with the guy that agrees with uh, his answer. Yeah, and this is what I was thinking as well. I do have some double-sided tape, but the second you touch it to the tape, you're kind of uh, committed. Whereas if you use glue, you can slide it around a little bit. And I don't remember where it is, but in one of these drawers somewhere, and I'll, I'll have to uh, I'll have to sort through and find it. But in one of these drawers somewhere, I've got a. Uh, you know, like a roller thing, like a, like a roller. Oh, so who wants to see a magnet trick? Not really a magnet trick. I came up with this on my own. And when I say I came up with it on my own, you know, it didn't really take much brain power. So I can't find it right now. Of course I can't find it right now. I love the micro trains, the constellation cars, the the solar cars. Um, I really like them. But uh, and if if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look at what my last three minute video is is of the constellation cars. Uh, to turn on the lights, you need to touch uh, a magnet, and they give you this as the magnet, which is a like telescope looking thing with a magnet on the end. So to turn on the light, you need to touch the end of the car, right? So you touch the end of the car and the light comes on. Now, when you have this consisted, consisted, is consisted a word? I don't know, I'm making up all kinds of words tonight. When you have this connected up to other box cars, you can't take this wand and touch it to the end just can't fit it in there so what i did is i took a neodymium magnet and i stuck it onto some tweezers and it obviously holds itself onto the tweezers so then i could stick this down between the two cars and turn the magnet on 
So now I don't need to disconnect all my cars to use the magnet. I don't know why Microtrains didn't make this so that it works like when you stick it down in, but this is my, uh, this is my solution to, I know it, it, it wasn't really that, uh, really wasn't that ingenious of an invention, but uh, it, it worked for me. It's how I turned on and off all of the lights. Yes, it does not work very well as a telescope. I have one out of the bo out of the bag. I don't know where it went, but uh, they don't give you that. You have to buy it. I <laughs> I bought one and then I got two, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Andy, I have no idea. Don't have any idea. According to New York City Subway, they currently have over six thousand four hundred pieces of rolling stock. White says he used double-sided tape on his road bed and his track. But yeah, I like magnets. Magnets are a good... Uh... <laughs> Joey said MTL hired a designer who hated the world. No, I just think, you know, when you're, when you are individually looking at the car on your... And so I work uh, kind of in a construction-related field. And all the time you receive drawings from architects that can't physically exist in the real world. And it's just kind of one of those things when you're at your desk, you know, in your office, things that look great on paper don't work in the real world. And this is, uh, uh, that's the way it works. We mounted a magnet on a bridge. It worked as they went under. Interesting. Don, with the, um, with the Constellation cars, because I found that a magnet across the top does not work because they put the reed switches uh, on the side. So <laughs> Dennis says there's no off position on the Genius switch. I know Dennis and I both have that problem, right? I'm wearing my, uh, hopefully these are my Dennis approved. And of course I can't get my leg high enough up to show you. These are my Dennis approved uh, work shoes for doing uh, dangerous work. I have a better magnet trick, losing a good magnet in 8x13 room. Yeah, they should have, right. If they would have put the reed switch on the top instead of uh, on one of the ends, then I could. Then you could do what Don says and just put a magnet on a bridge and have it turn on as it runs, uh, uh, runs under it. But yeah, there you go. David says, I uh, suggested a rare earth magnet attached to a popsicle stick. And that's what I was originally gonna do was take one of those magnets and glue it to a piece of wood. And then I was messing with tweezers. I don't know if people were around on Sunday, but I, uh, I may have opened up a thing of tweezers. So I, um, I was like, oh, let me just stick this to some tweezers and, and see if it works. There we go. My safety footwear for my model railroad Work session is Otter Creek approved. Don, I would love to see that because uh, that would be an awesome way of turning them on and off if, that, uh, if that's possible. But I, I'm not saying it's not possible. I just, uh, I've just had to get, I've just had to get the magnet down in between uh, to make it work. I, I haven't been able to get it you know, across the top, but maybe it depends on the strength of the magnet. The other thing that I learned with these solar system cars that are kind of cool is they actually have two different um, releases. The original release looks different than the new release. The, I guess I'll pick them up. Damn part. So the original release looks like this and it's got it's got these vents or whatever they are on the top and the newer release does not have those vents on the top so i don't know why they i don't know what the reason was for changing it maybe they changed it just so that people could uh tell the difference but yeah, PK and W, I, you know, I have that same problem where work sometimes gets in the way of uh, other things, but you know, at the end of the day, it's the work that allows me to buy all the trains. So 
You gotta, you gotta do a little bit of both. Okay, now, now I'm like gonna spend 20 minutes trying to get this back on the track over here instead of just uh, moving on and doing it later. Um, all right, leave that one. We'll, we'll put that one on later. Yeah, exactly. Uh, try opening the box car and seeing if you can move it. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that tonight on the show. One of the club members had a ton of varying strength magnets, so it could very well be that. Yeah, these the magnets that I am using are some magnets that I saw. Oh, here's the one that's open. So it's a little... Uh, it's a little telescope. Uh, these are the magnet. I tried using this, the magnet that goes under the track for the uncoupling. Uh, but these are the magnets that I got. Choking hazard, keep away from children, uh, fine cutter. I just got them on Amazon. They're just these little, uh, just some little neodymium, whatever you call it, magnets. And I just use them for various, uh, various things. Uh, Barry, if you're asking if I am, no, I am not. Uh, keep away from Heath. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly what it says on the front of it. It says keep, keep away. So, so black and red, we're definitely going to use this. And this is definitely going to run uh, to right about here. So the thought is, is that I'll pick up feeders here and I'll pick up feeders somewhere over on the other side as well. Uh, but the longer run, I think I'm gonna use the white and the, and the yellow. So the first thing I really need to do is, oh, that's not the one I wanted, I wanted that one. First thing I need to do is just kind of stretch these out and get a, good, uh, get a good length of it going. Cause what I'm actually gonna end up doing is I'm gonna weave it up and over uh, it's going to run up here and then it'll come down the standard and I'll leave a little service loop down here on the bottom. So I need to pull out a length of it and then kind of loop it up and over. And then it's a pain in the butt. I did it last time, but it, you know, it works. Uh, David Z to G says neodymium magnets at Harbor Freight. I wish I had a Harbor Freight nearby. I've never actually been uh, in one. Uh, neodymiums are strong. I use them for mounting my structures to the warehouse layout. And that's where I first saw them was uh, the terrain gamer guys would use them for uh, mounting their structures so they can move them around for gaming, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, Barry, I don't have blue and white. Uh, so I'm going to use red and black for my DC just because that's, just because, I don't know why. I don't have a good reason. I have no good reasons for nothing. Uh, so this is going to run from way back here all the way around the way over there. So I need a lot more wire than I think I do probably. So let's pull this out. Let's, um, let's see. Uh, I'm making a mess already. See, this is, this is where the fun comes in, making the mess. So we got, let's see here, we got here, and then, so I may need to feed this through a little bit. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Uh, I have a magnetic personality. Oh, uh, I have a magnetic personality. Uh, I go with blue and white for my DCC. I don't know why it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Andy says there's one in the Bronx as well as in Brooklyn. I'm not in the Bronx or Brooklyn very often. Pull it off the reel a cubit at a time. What I need is if you ever work a uh, construction job with electricians, they will have spools of various colors of wire on a uh, big rack. So you can uh, pull them all off 
uh, you know, and, and just sort of run them through the run them through the ceiling as you go. Uh, I don't I don't have that option, but normally what happens when I start doing this is I end up knocking things off of the shelf up here. So I, I'm going to try my hardest not to curse when I knock something off. But uh, I will warn you that there is a good chance uh, something's going to hit the ground. Uh, something's going to break into multiple pieces. And I am not going to be able to find uh, the pieces. I don't know where... I don't know where these uh, parts and pieces go. They seem to just sort of uh, disappear, which I don't understand why they just disappear, but things just seem to hit the ground and disappear. And I don't know where they go. So that's it's just, just the way it works. Uh, James says he uses black and red for everything. This is some 22 gauge wire that I get on Amazon. Uh, 100 foot spools. It's pretty cheap. It's solid core. Uh, it's been working pretty well for me. So, yeah. <laughs> then it said the pointer saga will continue this Thursday at 8 p.m. Central, which is 9 p.m. Eastern time. He's been doing premiere videos. Did you get tired of listening to Tom say and make you disappear last night? Yes. I just started muting the, every time I thought Tom was about to say it, I would just start muting my, uh, muting my computer. Uh, next time I know that if I'm watching his videos, I need to put on uh, earplugs. DB Tech says I get multi-conductor wire and cut the shield off and use what I need. I get it from work or my son. I do have, uh, or I did get a bunch of uh, 24 gauge solid core uh, you know, like category cable for uh, Ethernet. And uh, I use that for like draw, uh, f my frog. When I have to solder on a, uh, a wire on my frogs, I'll use it for that. Um, I've just been getting the, the 22 uh, is a little bit bigger. So you got a little bit less voltage drop. Uh, not that it really matters necessarily, but you know, this is a 12, 14 foot run. So uh, I bet he never mixes them. I mix up my wires all the time. Oh, I had a friend, Tyler Lightout was done with white wire. Oh, jeez. Oh. Uh, another thing I saw, and this came from uh, Jimmy at DIY and Digital, is he uses thermostat wire. I forget what gauge it is. But you can get it in like four, six, eight, ten strand. So he would run, you know, a single cable of thermostat wire with multi, uh, multi wires in it, and then just uh, split it up. I went with uh, I have number twelve. I think I have number twelve along the back and number fourteen on the front. I'm pretty short. I definitely do not need. I'm also n scale. Uh, I don't need it. Number 10's hard to work with. Number 10's big. I don't know how big your layout is, but uh, yeah, I mean, my I think it's 12 and 14, I think. Let's see, what, what does this say? This is... Uh, it says W14 by 100, so I'd assume this is 14. Uh, so that's what that's what I've been using for... A bunch of my bus wire stuff is this 14. I do have this 12. Why? I couldn't believe wire is expensive. Wire is expensive. Uh, thermostat wire is probably more like 20 gauge. Yeah, I'm not sure. How long of a run can you go with cat fiber block detection? Probably pretty far. Depends on what kind of... Uh... <laughs> Good try, Joey. Uh, probably depends on... Uh, what type of block detection you are using, if you're using uh, inline current sensing or if you're using uh, whatever different things. But you can probably go pretty darn far or whatnot. Martin says he uses stranded. Uh, my bus line is stranded. The, the 12 and the 14 that I have for my bus line is definitely stranded. Uh, if you're doing LCCCT calls, I would ask... Um, what's his name? What he thinks? Um, 
what's his name? Dick. Uh, I don't remember his last name, but the guy that owns uh, um, our circuits. I would say you could go pretty far, but you might start getting, with the coils, you might start getting interference from your DCC bus if it's, uh, if it's too long, but I don't know. I might just be making shit up. Roy Elfman may have a thought on it. I keep begging Roy, what I, I want Roy to do a, uh, I'm trying to get Roy to do a video with his oscilloscope measuring DCC signal under different uh, conditions. So if people want to see that, uh, help me poke him uh, to get that done. Thank you, Grandpa Rails, 4923. Uh oh, what happened to Norman? Oh, there you go. Nathan Five Chimes says security cable, 18 gauge stranded four conductor to 500 feet for $90. That is great. That is great. Uh, okay, folks, I need to Artie's heading out. Thanks, Artie. Hope everything goes well. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Roy, it looks like we woke. Uh, Roy up. Oh, what did, did I, did I curse? What did I say? I don't even know what I said. Did I drop something and curse? Heath, Robert needs help. Which Robert? Oh, Robert Darby. Uh, can you pull 2533 past the uncoupling? 2533. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. That is, uh, I'll need to look into making that a little bit longer so that doesn't happen. I thought of buying a scope. The problem is the scope I'd want to buy would be like 500 bucks and I don't want to uh, do that. I didn't burn anything up, but I am about to start running some wires. So uh, hold your breath, it could happen. It definitely, definitely, definitely could happen. There's probably, there's got to be an easier way to do this besides just making a complete mess, but I usually just make a complete mess. It seems to, uh, seems to be the, I just heard something beeping behind me and I have no idea what it was. Ah, there you go. Did, did anybody respond to my uh, groups.io post about the, uh, the CS105 has, has has anyone gotten them shipped? All right, Roy, this is for you. Everyone's waiting for your answer. So to not completely knock something over, we're gonna take, we're gonna move these uh, because I know already I'll knock them off and I don't, I don't want to cry on stream. And I apologize, you probably can't see me over here, but this is where I need to start. So I am going to, this thing has come in so handy. I don't know if people have seen these. It's a little fold them, fold them up stool. This thing is, uh, this thing is good. Wait a second. Uh, Roy says he has no idea, but put the coil as close to the track as you can. Yeah. Adam's waking up, saying the bridge module I've been working on, I'll be redoing a section of the river as Whitewater Rapids. <laughs> Nobody's responded. Uh, so we were talking earlier on the Discord. If people don't know, there's a link down in the description if you want to join the Discord. Uh, we tend to get into some interesting conversations. Uh, one of the latest ones uh, is about whether the CS105 from TCS is actually going to ship. Uh, it was supposed to ship in August, but some of the people that pre-ordered it have not gotten theirs yet. So we're just kind of we're just kind of keeping an eye on that. Uh, trying to see. I, th I think that that is a, 
I think it's an interesting idea, that uh, command station. I just really want to get some more real world opinions on it to see what to see what people think about it. You know, it's uh I just realized I'm doing this probably not in the in the best way cuz now I'm going to have to pull the I'm going to have to pull the the yellow and white wire all the way to the end and I didn't uh I probably should have done that I probably should have done that first because uh, now they're all kind of twisted into each other. So let's see if I can, let's see, I, oh, there we go. Uh, yellow, what am I pulling on? Yellow and white. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. I almost knocked over. I have a, I have a Vallejo uh, paint and I've got all my paint stuff right here in front of my face and I was afraid of knocking all the the paint stuff on the floor and uh i don't know if you can see what i just did but the the wire is now all over the floor interesting that'd be putting it mildly yeah i'm back to listening and what not watching working on my layout yeah i hope this you know i like kind of doing stuff live working on it uh hopefully it inspires people uh, David wants to know what I'm wiring. So what I'm doing is before I put up my clouds, my, my backdrop clouds, what I am going to do is run uh, some wires for track power to this location and run wires for sensors to this location. And that way, when I go to put the backdrop on, I can... Uh, you know, I can, I can just put them over the wires and still have the wires in place, uh, ready to be, uh, to be used. So let's see. All right, we're getting closer. So the yellow may actually be long enough. I may have pulled too much yellow through. Now I have to re-pull some of the black through. Um, but we'll we'll get it there. Who who said this was gonna be easy? You know, I guess it is if this was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Isn't that what they say? Um I just realized this shelf that I'm pulling this stuff behind uh is not secure and there's not a lot of weight on it, so it's kind of uh it's kind of uh moves every time I every time I pull the wiring. So I'm trying hard not to knock anything over. And I'm almost succeeding. Sorry, I'm not reading the chat right now. Hopefully, hopefully there's not too much. Uh, uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Ugh. Everything's getting caught. This is why shelves aren't necessarily the best way to do it. Oh, fudge. Did I say fudge? David dropped a vote in for wiring. Going for supper now. Thanks, David. Uh, where'd you get your cargo pants? I wear them when I can get them. Uh, if you're talking about my shorts, what I'm wearing are, I think they're like Wrangler shorts on Amazon. Uh, he's getting to uh, getting old. When you get to a certain age, you're required to make grunting noises getting up and down. Yeah. Dennis, the TCS command station is built in Wi-Fi, other things as well. Train Lovers has a deep depth review of it, very techy. Yeah, the, the DR5000 also is built in Wi-Fi, which is one of the reasons I went for it uh, when I was making the uh, making my decision back two years ago. I'm definitely at the grunting when standing up or down age. I might be grunting a little bit more because I did go to the gym last night and I am a little bit uh, sore. Uh, from that. Yeah, the, getting down is easy. Getting back up is uh, hard. Mark, man, I wish I was 35. Woo! I haven't been 35 for like 14 and a half years now. So this is the part where I start knocking things off of shelves. 
So we're going to see if I can avoid doing that. Um, all right, so this yellow wire is definitely too long. We're, we're going to have to pull that back. Uh, we're going to have to pull that back a little bit. I don't know what went wrong with that. I don't know why I made it so long. But we'll figure that out in a little bit. I should have set up my iPad back here so that I could see the chat. I didn't... Uh, I didn't think about it. Dennis, yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, James, it is, uh, they consider it a premium uh, command station, and they have uh, priced it accordingly. So, yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely up there in, in the pricing. Uh, but, you know, you know what they say, you get what you pay for, right? I don't know that that's really true necessarily, but that's the theory. Uh, yep, I'm gonna start grunting again. <laughs> I don't know when. Uh, I don't know when everything got so hard. I keep turning the air conditioning on too, but it's it is warm in here. <laughs> like this is enough activity to make me actually uh actually warm so what i do is i go up over uh over the brackets and then back uh uh back down so the you know the wiring is the wiring does not droop is kind of the goal kind of get the wiring uh you know behind everything but not uh uh, not uh, not too much droopage and hanging down. Yeah, three hundred. I know, right? Uh, yeah, get the. Yeah, no. Uh, Joey was thirty-five when his first kid was born. Yeah, yeah. Dwight, thirty-five and thirty-one years. Yeah, and Dennis, if if you're already like all in for LCC, it's not a it's not a bad. Uh, it's not a bad way to do it. No. I wish these jewel cases were more scared than they were and that they would uh, cooperate a little bit more. When I did this before, I realized I ran it, I did it a little differently than how I'm doing it now, uh, which may have been a little bit uh, easier to do, but we'll, we'll make it happen. And I am just, at this point, I am just taking jewel cases down because I know if I don't take jewel cases down, I'm going to make a big mess. And if, if I was not on video, I probably would not take the jewel cases down. I would just, I, you know, I would just go for it. But being on video, I think it's probably a good idea. And I don't know what I did, but the train has stopped. Huh. Oh, I knocked it off the track over here. Boy, I don't know if that's gonna work. I've got a uh, I've got a train running on that lower track still that I didn't uh, I didn't stop. Pre-ordered the Bachman Amtrak Acela. Yes, exactly. So the wire is pinched tightly against the metal shelf brackets on the top of the bracket where it's the uh, um, the sharpest part of it. Glad I am not the only one. Uh, yeah, there, I don't, uh-oh. I'm really having problems with that train now. It is, it is, uh, the caboose, the caboose has completely jumped the rails over here and is completely off the track. Um, this is the red circus train that I had running the other, uh, day on the stream, Sunday on the stream. So it is, uh, this is the hard part about, like, I'm so jealous of people that have like big rooms to run their trains because you don't have these problems of like, like everything's just on top of each other. So it's, it's, I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm very lucky, but, um, did, did anybody see that? I'm very lucky. It's just hard to, uh. 
Yep, auto wire shut. Yeah, correct. As I, as I pull it through, uh, it's going to take the jacket off the wire and electrify the standards. And then I can just tap into the standards anywhere along here to uh, uh, run, uh, run the train. Cease operations? Probably. I probably should. I probably should. Thomas says, I just added my seventh camera on OBS. Yeah, RTSP is pretty good for uh, getting cameras in. The problem with the RTSP is just the delay that you get. And that's, that's why I, uh, whenever possible, I do not use a uh, web-based camera just because I am, uh, I'm a stickler for the, for the delay that you get with uh, IP-based solutions. So the problem with the way I'm doing this now is I'm so anal that when I go to put this all back, I'm gonna have to sp I'm gonna spend so much time lining up, uh, lining up all the track or line not the track, lining up all of the uh, the cases. Um, and I'm gonna try and do this without like pulling too much, but uh, so yeah, it looks like. Looks like I'm gonna want a tiny bit more red, but then I'm gonna wanna pull the yellow back. So let's pull, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tight. That is tight. So the plan is, I don't know if you can see it here, but these red wires will come down here and I will, um, and I've kinked them, which is not the best thing in the world but I don't think I broke them. Um, so I will make, you know, connections uh, down, down here, uh, down here behind this uh, structure as additional track power. See that? Oh, I don't like when I do things like that. Let's see if I can get a little bit more length out of that. Uh, here's the red cable. Here's the black cable. I am just pulling some more through. I probably don't need any more length here, but you know. And I'm trying not to pull it across the, all the brackets. There we go. So that's my, uh, that's more than enough for my feeder. Yes, the cost of wire is not cheap, but having a little bit extra on this side in the long run, I think is gonna be a, uh, a good thing. Um, yeah, I mean, 1.5 seconds though is huge, is huge when, with live streaming. Uh, but yes. Um, yeah, it's really not a bad idea, right? I mean, think about uh, if you do, again, referring back to construction in large buildings, if you work in big skyscrapers, uh, to transfer the power from the transformers in the basement up to the top, they actually have these huge metal bus bars that are in these uh, chases, and they're they're not insulated. They're just open copper bus bars that just run, you know, stories from way down. Uh, so you know, standards are probably the same thing. Uh. Install plugs to quickly tap into power. Yep. And that's the hard part's just getting the wire to where you need it. I need some water. I'm tired. I don't know about anybody else, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's not really. I'm just making stuff up now. But I got my water over here in the corner, try and fill it up, try and stay hydrated. Keeps me going. Uh, what did Grandpa Rails do? Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'd love it. You know, if people can hit the thumbs up, that would be awesome. Uh, definitely helps. Uh, people want to support the channels. You can become a member on YouTube, become a member on Patreon. Uh, you don't have to become a member, but if you so desire, uh, that would be fantastic. Got a lot of things going on. Got a lot of great sponsors. Uh, I'm going to play the video in a second. One of the, 
Iowa Scaled Engineering isn't really a sponsor, but I love their motormen so much that I asked them if there was anything that they could do. Uh, so you can use the code HUMAN on any of my sponsors, but Iowa Scaled Engineering uh, also has uh, a discount on the motormen if that's something you're interested in. I'm gonna keep pulling wire. Uh, I'm gonna play this video. Uh, come check back in and we'll see how much I have knocked off of uh, the shelves. It's all about humanity. All right, so what I'm having a problem with is I need longer arms. Uh, and I don't have longer arms available. And I'm trying to get up here into this corner uh, back here. And uh, without longer arms, it is proving to be uh, difficult. Uh, so we're just gonna kinda push our way through things here. All right, so, so that's about the length I want on that yellow and white wire there, and I'm gonna pull things uh, back. So who's, uh, James, what did you say? I saw you said, uh, what, what are you missing that's out of stock? Yeah, water and electric. Here's an interesting little tidbit about water and electric. In theater, if you ever see in a water effect in theater on like a stage, it is handled by the electricians. Uh, so anything dealing with water in a theater, the electricians handle it, and it's because of exactly what uh, John is saying, water, water and electric. Oh, what'd you get, Joey? Is it another locomotive? <laughs> Ethan, welcome, sir. Ethan Armitage in the house. Russ says he's a licensed electrician who's worked in a few high rises in my day. Yeah, Russ, what are, what are those big copper things called? I just, I happened to see him one day. We were working in, uh, I forget, one of, the t one of the buildings in Times Square. And I mean, these copper bars were just massive. Just massive, really kind of, uh, Really kind of crazy how uh, how big they were, but apparently that is the most cost effective way uh, to run the you know to run the bus bars up the up the side of the building. All right, so we're we're trying to get this cable now, uh, and this again is where I need longer arms, uh, and where I don't have longer arms. So we're gonna have to make do with what I have, unfortunately. And unfortunately, some of these cases are longer than other cases, and they are preventing me from getting the wires where I need them. I know what everyone's saying is the solution is just, just to get rid of all this stuff, right? Oh, come on. Come on! Gonna start yelling at it. Uh, okay, so now we're getting now we're getting somewhere. Now we are get there. We go. Now I got done what I needed. So we are going to pull this back. So now what I'm doing is I'm gonna try and work. I'm gonna try and work this yellow. I'm gonna try and work these yellow wires back a little bit while keeping them tight enough so that they're not dangling. Um, making them not too tight, that I'm not knocking things over. Although I can't promise anything. Uh, yellow and white are these. So let's, so now I'm working these uh, back here. This is where it's good to have a partner, which I don't have. Oh, 
There we go. Turn the camera a little bit. Probably turned that a little too fast. Probably made a couple people sick. Uh, this is working though. Got my red and black, got my yellow and white. Got plenty of slack. Uh, got this pulled through. Let's just take a quick look back here and make sure that the, the wires are for the most part in a good spot and not completely hung up on anything back here. Let's give a little tug on these, pull these, pull these nice and snuggish. Uh, snuggish is uh, an official word if people don't know. Um, don't want to pull that back. There we go. So now we're going to pull this yellow back this way. And the, so theoretically, if, if all of this goes as plan, planned, 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 I don't know what word I'm saying. Uh, if all this goes as, as I am planning for it to go, hopefully uh, coming up on a very, very soon, very soon stream. Engl wow, English is like complete. I, I've lost all use of the English language right now. Does anyone know if Keith broadcasts through any other venue? I do not. Uh, I did. Uh, I did multicast to you uh, to Facebook for a little bit, but nobody, nobody really went over there, so I stopped doing it. But I might. I might do it again if uh, if it's something people want. I may. I may do that again. Conroe eighty ninety eight. What's going on, sir? <laughs> no, I am not. Boy, that would make a live stream. Art's jumping in the shower. That's, I don't know if that's an image I want or not. But the, yes, George, I absolutely probably should have done the wiring first, but I, uh, you know, I, I have, I have replanned this so many times at this point that, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just happy that I am, I am getting it to this place. So I'm gonna run out a little bit more of this wire. Let me turn this again. Uh, sorry for the movement. I'll try and move this nice and slow. There we go. So I am just gonna take these ends now, which are pretty much in a good spot. I will eventually go through and uh, uh, tack them up a little bit in the corner so they're not dangling. Uh, they're gonna come over this way and come down here and tie into tie into all the the electronics and hoo-hahs whatnots over here and this is where you do not want to cut it too short because now that you've run all that wire the last thing you want to be doing is cutting it too short and making your life difficult. So I'm giving myself plenty of slack. And, oh, not that one, this one. And now I come back over here and I just gotta roll this, uh, roll this back up. I still have, a, still have a lot of yellow. Haven't even used this green at all yet. Uh, red and black, I'll probably need to replace pretty soon. I'm running pretty low on that. Uh, remind me, what are we wiring again? So what we are wiring, the, so the HO scale, right, goes back and forth along, along this shelf. It's wired up, the sensors are all wired up. Uh, the Z scale is gonna run on top of this foam riser. So before, uh, the other day I cut these pieces of plastic out and these pieces of plastic are going to go on top here and they're going to fill in the gap, uh, the gaps in the riser as well as the gap between here and the wall. So before I close that gap up, I needed to get the, uh, the background uh, in. I want to put the clouds in on the background there. So before I got the background in, I wanted to get the wiring in. So this wiring the yellow and the white are going to be for the sensor on this end. Uh, so this will be the, you know, the far stop sensor. Uh, this is going to be a track feed. 
So I will feed the track here and I will feed the track over on the other side as well. So. How do you uh, tap your feeds? I use a lot of... Uh, I use lever nuts a lot. I've got these lever nuts, which are just, uh, you know, two in, two out. I've got other lever nuts as well. Uh, this is what I'm using for my main line are these guys. So what, what I do is I have the, the main line feeds come in and then it gives you, you know, three reds and three blacks. So uh, this works very well for me. Uh, in, you know, Gazinza, Gazalsas. Uh, this can use any size wire, so you can have number, well, I don't think it goes up to 10s. I think it just goes up to 12s. Uh, doesn't say on the back, but uh, number 10s coming in, and you can then have 22s coming out, and it's really simple. And unlike suitcase connectors, uh, it's very easy to just open them up and pull the wire out and uh, change out the wire if you need. So I had gotten a bag of 10. I've got three left. So they're all uh, all around under there. I need to get some stick on trunking. I don't know what trunking is. Uh, you know, the other day I considered putting a shelf below my HO scale wall layout and hooking up a point to plane end scale track. We're rubbing off on people. <laughs> Uh, Norman, are you really asking what pig Latin are? Uh, those are called lever nuts, L-E-V-E-R uh, nuts. Uh, there's various brands. They were originally, my understanding, made by Wago. Uh, you can look up Wago connectors. The new style Wago connectors are a different. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so Wago lever nuts used to be that style. Now Wago lever nuts are a different style. They're actually clear. So you can see where the wire comes in. Wago wire nuts are very expensive. Uh, these are cheaper. But I have all kinds of different uh, sizes of them. Uh, you know, like the, these are two in, three outs, or six outs, actually. I've got, you know, here's like a three by three. I have uh, two by twos. I've got these that I got to use for my uh, frog wires. So I can, you know, the wire that comes out of the Pico Electrofrogs and Unifrogs, I'll just connect this to that, and then I can pick up my frog wire off the other side. These are nice because these actually will link together. So if you, you know, if you need two wires or whatever, you can link them together and make, uh, make two buys. My supplier for these is just Amazon. Uh, I've just been buying... Uh, various sets of them on Amazon. This is what I'm about to show you is not a set, but I bought a, you know, I bought like a tackle box thing. And for the most part, I try and keep them uh, in here. You know, if you just, if you don't need to go like in and out, right? Like this would be, you know, red and black in, red and black out, let's say. You can use something like this as well, which just has two holes. Uh, so like some of the things that I have, um, you know, if you need to have one wire coming in and like four wires going out. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're great. Uh, yeah. Even where you buy them, it's, uh, it's hard. So high planes, you can use these, these with, you know, 12 gauge main bus wires and then, uh, you know, so I used, what I did for mine is I had the bus wires uh, come in, come into here and then go out of here to continue around the layout. And then out of the other ones, I had them run to distribution blocks. So <laughs> you sent something to my account. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think it was me. Uh, I think you mean Wago, not Waco, but can you pull the string 2510 past? Oh yeah, this, this again is where we can't. Uh...
Robert, try and remind me, and I'll I'll try and remember to fix that. Um, I'll try and remember to fix that. But yeah, so I have like a lot of these like bins of uh, you know of things. I've got you know here's a bin of uh, just you know quick disconnects. Uh, these quick di disconnects I use on. On these guys, uh, these guys have the little quick disconnects on the back. So I've got those for that. Um, I've got a bin of, you know, like metric screw, metric screws. Um, I've got bins of, you know, here's a bin of uh, spacers. I got another bin down here of, Um, so the so here I do have these are uh, some suitcase connectors because at one point I thought maybe I might use suitcase connectors. Uh, these aren't exact. Actually, these are not. They're not suitcase connectors. They're called T-tap connectors. What you do is you. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, let's zoom in. So you tap the wire, similar to what a suitcase connector, but then you use the spade connector to connect into into the tap so it makes the it makes your tap uh removable so <laughs> heath you need a special communications device for you and robert maybe a siren for the red flashing light yeah probably uh what do my quick disconnects look like on on which i actually use these a lot i use these a lot for uh I mean, they're not quick disconnects. Um, do I have any plugs? Oh, I do. So I do use. I do use these a lot. Uh, screw terminal barrel connectors. This is your standard, you know, your standard size for a lot of the power supplies uh, you're going to get. And I use uh, I use those a lot. Robert, I'll try and remember to fix that. I just need to, I need to just lengthen it. Looks like you're set up. Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff. The T-taps are problematic if not on solid wire. I think most of these things work better on solid wire in general. Uh, I have not seen how Tim is doing it. I'm kind of curious. Uh, yes. Um, I do have... Um, here's a, this is an Anderson power pole crimper that I've got. That's that type of crimper. Um, I got some of these quick disconnects as well. I thought I was going to use these for the motorman and then didn't end up using them, but they, uh, these are nice little quick connects as well. I've got, uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Um, oh, actually, wait. Yeah, so this is for, now I can't remember. Oh yeah, so this is for Anderson power poles and this is for uh, like these type of connectors here. They've got the, the red, blue, and then this is my favorite type of wire stripper uh, are those guys, but. Yeah, I, you know, having having the right tools definitely makes uh, makes life a lot uh, easier. I used Anderson power poles a lot when I was doing the T-Track stuff. Um, yeah, those green quick connects are good for aligning baseboards as well. Let's do too. Uh, he's using terminal strips to connect feeders to the bus. No soldering under the layout. I have been using. Uh, let me see if I can find it now. Let's see, Amazon. Uh, I will try and find the board that I'm using. That's one of the reason I use those lever nuts is so that I don't need, uh, so that I don't need to, you know, solder anything under. So I've used the lever nuts and then 
at a couple different locations. Uh, the so right, so these lever nuts that I showed. These these lever nuts here. So I would come in here and then go out there to continue my feeder wires. Then out of these other ones, I would go to one of these breakout boards. And then from this breakout board, I would connect all of my, uh, all my wires for my yard go to uh, those breakout boards. What do you call those green connectors? Oh, these? Are these Phoenix connectors? I don't think that's right. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, yeah, Phoenix connector. These guys right here. Uh, Five pin male, female, Phoenix type connector, no soldering, green PCB, uh, screw terminal, five pole is what those are. Yeah, I have for, for really thin wires. Uh, this guy's made from, uh, this guy's made by Klein. Uh, this guy goes from 22 to 32. So if, if I'm doing fine wires, I'll use this one but anything higher than 20, I just grab this guy. It's just so much, uh, so much easier, so. Yep, yes, uh, Phoenix connectors come in a couple different uh, styles. You hate that type, which, oh, this type? Yeah, but if you're gonna do, you know, if you're gonna do 24 or whatever, I mean, I find this, yeah. You use this on even smaller stuff, uh, this, According to the label on this, uh, this is, oh, according to the label on this one, it says uh, 10 to 20 AWG and 12 to 22 stranded. So theoretically, you, you need this if you're going below 22, but yeah, I mean, they all kind of work. I wonder if they make one of these for thinner wire or not. Um, but these are some of the tools I have, some of the things I use for wiring. And yes, I do have a lot of extra stuff, but you know, it's like when I need it, it's great to just have it and to not have to, you know, wait uh, to get it. So I've got a lot, you know, I've kind of, kind of picked up a bunch of stuff over the time. Oh, one of the other things I haven't shown yet. Oh. I found my blue wire. <laughs> I forgot that I had it. My, uh, are you saying my Klein Tools uh, wire stripper is not as good? Yeah, lighter in your nails, that works too. Uh, oh, what was I about to pull out this? Um, I don't use this as much, but uh, when I solder things, uh, like when I solder up the sensors, uh, the photoelectric sensors to the wires and stuff. This is uh, heat shrink tubing three to one, but it's marine grade. So it's the one that's got the stuff in it. So when you heat it up, uh, the stuff kind of oozes out, but I like it. I feel like it makes a, I feel like it makes a better connection. I don't know why, but I like it. I like it. I need to definitely organize stuff. Some of this stuff's kind of, I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you could see where I was pulling stuff from, but like I was definitely pulling stuff from various, uh, various different spots to kind of get it all out. <laughs> you can't even find your wire strippers now. Yeah, you don't use your teeth. Uh, what gauge is that wire? This wire is 22 gauge. So this is, um, No results. Hold on. Uh, oh, I don't know why I can't find it. What does it say? Wire. Let's try wire. Wire. Uh, that's not it. Here it is. Um, 
if anybody wants any of these links, I could start dropping these these links in the in the chat. But this is the this is the wire. Just you know, just search for uh, search for what you want and just change the color. Um, but it's you know, 22 gauge solid hookup wire uh, comes in 100 foot spools, and I've got it in. Uh, oh, I am making a mess now on my desk. Um, I've got it in all these all these different colors just because I like having different colors for different things. Uh, now that I found my blue, I am not going to rerun that, but I'm kind of bummed. But you know, it's all good. Um, JD Grandparels, thank you so much, and thank you so much for helping out in the chat as well. Really appreciate all of that support. Heat shrink, yes, love my heat shrink. What's up, Steven with a PH? Yeah, don't use your teeth. I have the Irwin automatic strippers and it does fine on my 22 gauge. Yeah, and I'm sure you can use it on that. It's just, you know, I like the tingle you get. No, Norman, no, 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 no. Take two minutes to swap to the blue. No. Uh, says wire unavailable. Uh oh. Oh, currently unavailable. Interesting. Let's uh, let's see if any of the other colors are available. Um. Yeah. So here's uh, I'll put here's the link to the black. And you should be able to find uh, some of the other colors from there. But here's the black wire. Uh, let me go see if I can find the red real quick. Here's the... Um, here's the red wire. Red wire. Yeah, so that's some of the stuff I use. Um, people want, oh, here, I can look up these lever nuts as well if people want the, uh, people want a link to the various lever nuts I use. I use two main brands. Uh, I've been using uh, GKE Mars and XHF. I've been having pretty good luck with these, uh, these two brands. Um, so you can you can check those up lever nuts and um, oh I don't know why this is I don't know why this is creating such a such a big link right now but it is here's here's another thing of lever nuts so yeah, I mean, check those out. Uh, old phone wire works uh, really well for feeders. I've been using just ethernet wire, which I don't know if it's the same or not. Uh, the wire that's in there, pull through the blue wire, it's dead easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait. Um, I know each of the spools at 100 feet is 13 bucks. They may have other lengths and stuff, um, but, yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's options out there. There's there's definitely options, and uh, you know, if people want to learn a little bit more about what I use, uh, post questions in the comments. I can do another video specifically on stuff. I just realized here's a a Rogue Anderson power pole connector, uh, but I do I like you know I like these barrel connectors. I've been using these a lot lately. Uh, for combining power supplies. So instead of using a whole bunch of the Digitrax 14.8 volt, 300 milliamp power supplies, I've been uh, combining them all into a, a larger power supply. Um, you know, got all kinds of uh, different connectors and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to keep going on some of this wiring stuff. I got, you know, I got things to do. I got skies to put up. Uh, lots and lots and lots of projects uh, to get all this stuff done. So I am sure I will have another exciting project or and or lots of other 
um, exciting projects coming up. So from the city, from, I can't even talk. It was so good. I was so ready to go there from the city that never sleeps. Farewell, model citizens. It's all about humanity.